I really want to take the AI example I did at the beginning of the show and extend it. I want to use AI to write a high-level analyzer that creates human-readable annotations that are device-specific. That will allow me to be debug more efficiently because instead of looking at hex parameters, I can actually look at human-readable text within the Logic 2 software above each one of the bytes that's read. Okay, so let's repeat the previous experiment, but add a little bit to it. So just to give you a little more context, I've got the Arduino IDE open, and I'm programming a Arduino, or I guess you should say Adafruit Feather M0 that's Arduino compatible, and it's communicating to this SH1107. And I am using this high-level API provided uh, for this the, in the Adafruit libraries for the graphics, as well as this SH1107 part. And I'm setting the dimensions, and ultimately I am uh, passing it the Salia logo, and, and then I've got some more messages that are transmitted below. Now, the first step is to actually program the part, so I'll go ahead and press compile, and it will upload the sketch. It's building, it's uploading, and the next thing I want to do is go observe the communication between the uh, microcontroller and the SH1107 uh, OLED driver. So we will leave the Arduino software. We will open up Logic 2. I've already got my Logic Analyzer plugged in. Uh, I2C is a two-wire protocol, so I'm looking at channel 0 and channel 1. And then I've also got a couple analog channels down here. I can make sure that I've got a 3.3 volt microcontroller. Uh, and my analog, I don't really need right now, but I can, I can leave it open just so you can see that each time I acquire signals on my logic analyzer, I get both the digital and the analog output. And I'm going to press the reset button on my microcontroller, press run, and then let go, and you should see signals. And I see signals flying by. Um, if I zoom out, you can see those uh, packets and, and frames coming in and each of these are some form of transaction. So I'll go ahead and stop that. We can then zoom in and actually see the digital data. So I've got clock signals, I've got data, uh, and the next step is to go decode that. Um, and it's, it's cool that I can both see the uh, analog and the digital representation of those. I can turn on my analyzer, go pick I2C, set which is data, which is the top line, channel zero, and channel one, it's clock, click save, and now I'm immediately decoding uh, the, the frames that are coming from this device. I'm categorizing those frames over here in this data table, and it's displaying a, uh, an annotation above each one of the frames in the Logic Analyzer software. Now this is great. The next step is to go figure out what each one of these means by reviewing the data sheet. So I'll go over to Google. I'll go to the SH1107 data sheet and we'll, we can check it out. And we can start to look at what these, these hexadecimal values mean if I get back down into the command set for the actual part itself. So what we'll do now is we'll go ahead and just download this data sheet. Uh, we'll drop it in our downloads folder and we'll save that. So now let's jump into Claude and repeat what we did before by interpreting the data sheet. So we'll go ahead and click attach. We will grab the data sheet itself. So now that we've got the data sheet, we can go grab some of the commands themselves. So we'll open up Logic 2 and let's grab some of the, these commands. So got that. Um, using the following transactions as examples describe the state machine and process needed to proper properly decode these frames and provide him readable context for each command or data by command parameter or data by set to the SH1107 
All right, let's see what happens. Um, what I've found as I've used this is I have done this a number of times and the output results are actually a little bit different each time, uh, even when using exactly the same commands. So, and, uh, so I'm curious as to how robust this will be as we start to tackle new uh, applications or use different parts, or even two people on two different settings try to interpret the, the same part. And so what I'm seeing here is it's really promising. It does seem to understand um, each one of these packets. So the next step is we want to uh, jump over and start to build an actual HLA. So while this is finishing up, uh, we'll go back to logic two, and the end goal is I want to add a level of context above each one of these labels that tells you this human readable information. And in order to do that, we will need to go create uh, a high level analyzer. In order to do that, I come down to extensions. I create an extension. This is going to give me a template for the Python uh, that will allow me to uh, generate the the actual uh, customized extension. So uh, decode sh1107 i2c commands and data. And the author is uh, generative AI. And we'll go ahead and pick a place to save that. And we'll drop this in the downloads folder. This is going to create a folder with a couple files in it. A JSON file describing it, a readme file, as well as this Python template. Now that that's saved, you see that it's uh, a local copy right up here. And when I go add it, I'll click add and go grab it uh, right here. Um, but let's not add it yet because I think it's going to throw errors and whatnot because it's just a generic uh, template at this point. The next step is to jump back over to Claude. It looks like we're done with our generation and it's reading each one of these frames. Now, each of these are actually transactions and what we call frames in Logic 2 are the individual bytes. Um, and so uh, that, that is important. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here and uh, go to our support documentation. And I'm going to go grab software extensions help. And if this window is wide enough, you see that I'm able to export as a PDF and it should give all the information uh, needed in order to write this high-level extension that will place these annotations above uh, the actual uh, data itself. And you see I2C communication overview. We get addresses. We're able to read data, acknowledgments, errors, and this tells data format. So we're going to provide this as context to our generative AI. So in order to do that, I need to print it to a PDF. I'll go ahead and save it to the downloads folder as well. And let's see if we can give it some of that context. So if I go grab my CLA support document uh, and go ahead and add that as context. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go grab our uh, high-level analyzer. So we'll open up our high-level analyzer Python file and say, using this knowledge, Modify the HLA Python uh, script to uh, add these human readable descriptions to appear above the received frames in the logic to software. Note the frame in logic two is a single byte and a state state machine is needed to determine uh, whether the incoming data is a control byte um, command parameter parameter or data. All right, so uh, let's see if 
uh, if it can properly uh, use the context, interpret the data sheet, and then ultimately uh, our goal is to create this high-level analyzer extension. So it looks like we've got uh, a table of instructions, which is great. Um, contrast control, display on, display off. And then we've got uh, different message types in this class. Uh, I do happen to know that this class needs to be called HLA unless we modify the JSON file. Um, and so we might, we might just modify that class to be HLA instead of this H1107 HLA. Uh, and then we can look, it did seem to catch a state machine, which is great. Uh, it is determining some number of parameters. Let's see if our lookup table includes a number of parameters. I don't see that there, so I'm not sure how it knows how many parameters. So we'll have to look into that. Uh, 3C is the address, so that looks correct. Uh, then we hit commands. Uh, it seems to be hard coding commands in. Um, which is interesting. And then it knows that that has a, a one parameter. Um, and so we want to expand this example to support and provide annotations for all of the commands and the original um, prompt. Focus on adding annotations of both. And then the address byte the control byte the command byte and parameters parameters note that uh, the number of parameters for a given command should it be tracked in the instruction lookup table. Lastly, the Python class should class should be called HLA. And we'll add some parentheses here, just so that it's clear. And let's see what happens. So uh, it looked like we were kind of hard-coded on, on 81, which is contrast. <clears throat> we really needed this to be a more a generic uh, example to work for lots of commands. It looks like it is uh, adding more commands, so that is promising. It did rename it to HLA. It did create uh, result types for address, control, command, parameter, and data, which are the different types of, of things I expect when communicating with the LCD driver. It does maintain the state machine. It does look for uh, an address byte. It looks for data. 03C does transition us. That's the address, so it transition us. And then data or control byte is zero, 00, so that's success. Uh, and as I glance through this, it looks like I am moving through different states. And I have a concept of parameters. Now, I guess the last question I have is, did my table up here uh, actually include number of parameters? And it did. So this is all the elements I expect. And uh, now the, there's an opportunity to go try it out. So uh, this is a little bit the guess and check method. Uh, ideally, we would be creating a, a, a test system or a way to simulate or evaluate the success of our code before we get to uh, what I'll call production in Logic 2. But for the purposes of this experiment, uh, we're going to 
We're going to do it this way. So I'll copy this code. I will come over here into Visual Studio. We will open a folder. And what we'll open is this downloads folder. We'll go into our decoder. We'll grab this high level Python analyzer. And this is the original example. And we'll just do a wholesale replace and save that result. Now that we have all of this uh, saved, we can then jump back over to logic two and add this high level decoder, tell it to pull data from the I2C low level analyzer, hit save. It showed you some numbers right here that indicated that it fully processed all of the data. If there is an error, it will show up as a window down here, but let's go ahead and go to the very first packet and just kind of evaluate this here from left to right. So we'll, we'll do some zooming in, take a look at this very first packet. Uh, and see how we did. So 03C, this is the device. Uh, 03C is device address. Control byte is 00. zero. Uh, set the contrast control setting to 2F. Success. Go to the next uh, tr transaction. We're going to write. We're going to have a control byte. We turn the display off. We set the clock ratio. Other values of getting this into the software is that you know, when I click on one of these values, uh, I can actually go to where that transaction is in the table and it will give me uh, that context and I can start to search. So, so we can start to look at things like where is contrast set? And I can see several different instances where that's set. And so once these become searchable, now I can start to actually find things in my code or even anomalies in my code. And this becomes a really useful debugging tool. So all that, I will go ahead and stop and let the community recommend what we try as, as next steps. But pretty exciting progress uh, in the world of uh, AI-generated high-level analyzers.